Hello and welcome to Hacks, where we try to simplify cybersecurity. Today we are back on Hack the Site, looking at the realistic missions. Hack the Site is a place that allows you to test out and learn new hacking skills, and I recommend giving it a go if you haven't done it before. So, we are going through the realistic missions, and we've already completed a bunch, and we're up to number 13 now. If you're looking for a solution to one of the other ones, you should be able to find it on my channel, just go back and look for it. But today we're looking at the Albanian Republican Party, and my might not have said that right, but Albanians elections are coming. Help delay these elections by taking down the main competitor site. Be careful though, you get caught, you'll be wishing you had soap on a rope. Cool, take the challenge. So we get a message from Frozen Bit. It says, Hey, Josh Hayes, aka Frozen Bit here, I really need your help. As you know, I'm in with the AoE Anarchists of Albania. Our mission is to throw the upcoming elections and at least attempt to delay them for the time being. That way, we've decided what would work best is if one of the main competitor sites is taken down. Even if it's down for a small time, things won't go smoothly for him and things will be delayed. That's my terrible accent there. Uh, yeah. So, let's go and take a look at the website. We got a basic white website. Nice logo there. Looks kind of military like government, doesn't it? Um, news page which has a number of options. If you select the month from the drop down, it will give you the corresponding months. News, interesting, it switches back automatically. Members, it shows you who's a member of the party. Uh, just a PHP page. Got the newsletter, our newsletters have all been cleared. We've decided to start clean with this section too. It will be about another month before we have the rest of the first new edition of newsletters done. One thing to remember though, when you want to order the newsletter, make sure you have your hidden login URL and password handy. So, they're talking about a hidden login URL. So, there are many tools we could use to find that. We could use Derb, uh, we could use GoBuster to brute force the subdirectories. However, if it's really obscure and really long, it could take ages to find it. So, I'm just going to make a note of this. Just for future reference, whoops, you've already seen my notes there, <laughs> sneaky. Cool, so we know that there's a hidden login URL and a password. Okay, that's about all we know. So that's the newsletter. If we go onto the mailing list, we can input our mailing list here. Let's just do admin at hacks.org. Maybe throw on like an escape, see what happens. Could not be added to emails table, please contact administrator. Okay. So we go on to speeches. It probably did some form of content validation there. Realized that I had the single tick on it and just didn't want to uh, look at it. Okay, so we're on the speeches. The following speeches have been given already. This speech is still being edited, has many errors because of our ex typist. Feels bad. So we've got one speech on speeches.php. Then if we click it, it goes to speeches2.php. Sweet. Press releases. So we have a number of press releases here. The second release is still in editing. Please be patient. That's a really bad feature. It doesn't give you the drop down again. So you have to go back, click on the press releases, click on three, view, the option disappears. Don't like this page. And then we have economy. The economy of Abonia is one of the ENRP's most focused on issues. As we continue to rebuild the site, we'll be adding more things like bar graphs, line graphs, and other things that we show the status of Abonia's missions. We also include our candidates' speeches and debates about this hot topic. So, we can't find anything initially on the page. Uh, we could try looking for sort of files like robots.txt. Gives you a 404. Try looking for admin, and we do find an admin page, but we have no credentials. Um, don't save, it does not match the password for admin. Yep, so we're gonna have to go on a bit of a hunt. So, I've already done this challenge, but what it appears to be is the main focus of this mission is to go through, find error messages, and use them to better understand the site and it, it find file paths and find your way into the site. So if we head back, what we can do is we can try and trigger an error where we've got the parameter where it says month or if we remove that but keep the question mark in place, we can start generating some errors because it doesn't know how to handle the request we're trying to send it. It's expecting parameters appended to the, to the, to the request 
but they're not there. So when I get in errors, and um, this is also what happens if you have like PHP debugging enabled. You may see it on some like WordPress sites where you enable WP debug in the config. Usually what you'll find is at the header of the website, you'll get a bunch of error messages which will tell you of errors in your PHP syntax. They're normally sent to the Apache logs or the Nginx logs. Um, but you can display them on your website. Now it's great if you're debugging, you can turn it on quickly, go into debug mode, fix your problems, but for malicious threat actors, they can provide a wealth of information. They can give out directory listings, they can tell you file paths, which is the same thing. They can allow the malicious actor to find flaws in the code, which could allow them to bypass authentication or to that effect. So we get a MySQL here, it says row does not exist, inquiry, inquiry, select post date from news table where month equals nothing. So as you can see there, we submitted nothing, so it doesn't know what to do with it, so it errors. So let's see if we can find some more. So if we go on to debates, and throw a question mark on there, we don't really get much. Members, perhaps this is some sort of SQL driven site, nothing. Newsletter. This is where we find out there's a hidden URL, so we don't need that. Mailing list. Uh, what happens if we submit that? Okay, admail.php is not a valid email address. No, nope, that's fair enough. Nothing really going on there. Speeches. Now, this one does have parameters, or it goes to speeches too. But if we throw on a question mark here, like it was expecting a parameter, we get the error message, speech cannot be found, but we also get a lot of information from the PHP debugging. So we can see that it's our, well, we can see the actual path to the site. So we see program files, Apache group, Apache 2, ENRP, so it has an old site. I wonder if we can still access that, speeches.php. So if we try and just visit here quickly. So I've not tested this before and see if this site still exists. No, cool. I did have one too many uh, forward slashes in there, but I'm not too worried. Fail to open program files Apache ENRP old site for inclusion. Include local share power. Yeah. Okay. We got some more information here. Now this appears to be interesting. We got a path there. Speeches. Okay. Yeah, interesting. We are getting a lot of information from this. We know the sort of file path which a malicious threat actor could use. This this information is useful. Press releases. Go on view. Right, so my SQL error row does not exist in table press table. Warning unexpected character input. Now we can go through this and we can see there this looks like sort of database connection string almost or web server string port 80 uh socket so it's, yeah okay but we see this as well so it's going to it's trying to get something from the directory speeches passwords and then it's using an md5 of the word speeches so if we go to speeches passwords We just get a message that says subdirectory and we can try going speeches like it says but that's going to 404 but what we can do is if we grab our terminal and we go echo hyphen n and it's important to have the n in there because otherwise it will hash like a new line with it so i've got out focus there Woo. it will hash like a new line with it and it will completely change the hash that you're trying to generate so if we just pipe that to an md5 we then get the md5 hash of the word speeches and we can take that and head back over here whoops and paste that in to the browser and then what we get is this directory which says passwords.fip. Um, yeah, so if we click on the passwords.fip, we get this file here. Well, this is, again, hashes, I believe. So if we copy that, what we can do, I'll tell you what, let's paste it in here first. Just to sort of, you know, utilize these tools a little bit. If we come in here, I've installed this tool called name that 
hash. And if we do hyphen T to tell it we're going to send it text, keep going out of focus, and then we put in single quotation marks, paste a hash there. Hopefully, what it should tell us, there we go, is the most likely candidate for this hash is an MD5. Uh, we can do the same for the other one as well. Whoops. I got butt these fingers on a keyboard, which probably isn't a great sort of trait to have for a penetration tester, is it? So we paste that in, mark that one, and that is also likely a raw MD5. So now we have that information, what can we do with it? Well, if we clear this quickly, and um, we can do sudo vim, I don't need to sudo it, but if we just do vim hash.txt, and then we get the hashes one by one. Whoops. Paste one in there, get the other hash. New line, paste, escape, colon, right quit. We should now have a file called hash.txt that contains the two hashes. And then what we can do is we can go to our tool hashcat, select the mode zero, which is an MD5. And then we can say user Joe downloads rock you so we're saying we're telling hashcat to crack the two hashes in that file which i haven't specified yeah so we're saying hashcat crack the two hashes in this file and their md5s and then i'm telling it to use the word list rockyou.txt so if we hit return on that and it's already been cracked so if i do show we can see that the hashes have actually been cracked i apologize i created the new file hoping that it wouldn't remember that i've cracked them it has, uh, but yeah, it has cracked them. So those are the two there. Those ha those hashes are now cracked as money one and admin. We can copy those and paste them into our notes. But then what do we do with them? Well, remember there was message of, there was a notification there was a message suggesting there was a hidden directory. I mean, first of all, we can try them on the admin directory. So, I mean, it's going to likely be admin. And then what was it? M O N Y one. M O N I one. M O N I one. And it says the password does not match. Uh, so yeah we got credentials but they don't appear to be working so what could possibly go on well could it be that it's a fake login portal um it did say to remember your hash for the directory and your password so if we get the hash for admin which we already know because we got it from the username and we just paste it into the url we get a different type of login form and then if we do admin and then mon a1 says incorrect username and password. Is it money one in admin? Money one admin. Hey, completed it. So yeah, that's uh, that's the challenge. Again, I've been stumbling through this one. Um, I sort of, I watched a uh, video and a docu, uh, I read a web, web um, website that went through it. Um, but I wanted to do it differently. Again, a lot of these other guys that I've seen, they take you to websites to crack the hashes and to generate the hashes, but I'd rather use built-in tools. Because a lot of the time when you're on engagements, you're not going to have access to websites. A lot of places, they're going to restrict access to the internet, like data centers, and you'll have to come up with ways to generate hashes or crack hashes yourself. You know, the internet's not always available. 
especially in sort of restricted high security conditions you you want to be able to use tools to do it yourself um but yeah i wanted to put my own spin on it um apologies if i sort of bumbled my way through it it's a bit of a different challenge again it didn't really require exploits in anything it just required taking the information from the error messages and from the from the information that we've been provided and using it to map out the application and sort of hack into it that well get the right credentials for it crack the passwords and get in uh it was a lot of fun honestly um i enjoyed it i, I liked using the errors to sort of find out where we were going there was uh, it seemed like a few rabbit holes along the way as well like that first page with a lot of the sql errors where it was referencing old sites that was a bit of a um a bit of a rabbit hole but no it was good uh the lessons that can be learned well it's going to be minimizing information disclosure again for one you know don't have sort of php debug messages all over your website if you can avoid it um i know sql errors sort of automatically get generated but try and keep error messages on your site to a minimum and um hashes as well you know if you're going to firstly salt your hashes if you're using md5s in the databases makes them stronger but just use uh non-reversible encryption you know if you don't have the public key but the private key you can't reverse it so use encryption or strong encryption algorithms and with that that's it for today i hope you liked it if you did give me a thumbs up if you found it informative maybe you could subscribe um i'd appreciate it and yeah that's it kind regards bye